Greetings, everybody. Um, I wanted to uh, basically update you guys on something that just recently came to my attention. And yes, it's already started, but that doesn't mean that we can't do something about it. Uh, it's called DC40, um, and it's uh, geared around, uh, I guess the best way to put it would be spiritual warfare. Um, it's a Christian prayer event um, geared towards ending um, anything pagan, basically, within the United States. Uh, and it is tied to some pretty prominent people, prominent politicians, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. Uh, but I just wanted to explain to you a little bit of the background of, of what DC40 is. Basically, it started on October 3rd, as you can see down here, and it ends on November 11th, 2011. Um, one of their main focuses is to pray over the Samhain or Halloween season through the Day of the Dead and the holidays that basically they consider to be satanic um, or, you know, have the wrong message for the United States. These people are Christian dominion, dominionists. As you've seen in my other videos when I talk about Christian dominionists, those are people who wish that this country or think that this country or believe that this country is, in fact, a, a, a theocracy. Uh, people like David Barton and his group, The Wall Builders, um, and other people like John Benefield, which I'm going to get to in a second. Now, these people, the reason why they're so dangerous is because they are so well connected. Uh, uh, presidential candidate Rick Perry recently had them at a prayer rally or invited uh, people like that at a prayer rally. Um, David Barton of the Wall Builders is very well connected and has uh, been featured on uh, TV shows um, like... Uh, Mike Huckabee's TV show, and of course he's very close with Glenn Beck, and um, much of what Beck's university, so well, so-called university um, knowledge came from about the the uh, founding of this country came from David Barton's pseudo historical perspective. So I wanted to talk to you guys about why this is so important, and uh, what I believe and what others believe that we can do about it. Now, uh, John Benefield, like I said, is uh, one of the people involved in this movement. Um, his, uh, he calls himself Dr. John B uh, Benefield, although I'm not sure exactly what he's a doctor of. Um, he, he refers to himself as an apostle and a founder of this church on the rock uh, in Oklahoma. Him and his wife run this church. Um, but they also have some pretty interesting political opinions as well. Uh, basically, recently, Dr. John Benefield decided, what took it upon himself to um, so-called divorce the District of Columbia from the supposed Goddess Columbia and uh, rename the District of Columbia the District of Christ. Now, of course, he's got no, you know, political or, you know, any cloit to, you know, kind of make that decision, although he claims that he has the authority from God, you know, wouldn't that all be nice if we could just claim that we had authority from some deity and go do things. But um, I'm going to show you some clip, um, and I got this footage from Right Ring Watch, which is a, a channel on YouTube that I watch quite frequently. They have some great information on people like this. Um, and uh, I just want you to kind of take in the information that I'm going to give you my perspective on it. Have you ever wondered why we, we elect good people to Congress sometimes, and sometimes they go there and they go nuts? Well, you might too if all the nation confessed that you were under the district of the Queen of Heaven called Columbia. Do you understand how serious that is? When we call it the District of Columbia, we're saying it belongs to Columbia, the Queen of Heaven, and that gives her a legal right to mess things up in our nation's capital. Well, in March of 2010, well, in December of 2009, we gathered one leader from all 50 states to divorce bail. And as we were there, we renamed the District of Columbia the District of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's a few problems that I have with the uh, so-called Dr. John Benefield's information in this clip. Uh, the first, of course, involving uh, the supposed goddess Columbia. Now, the uh, supposed goddess Columbia is really a, a pseudo-goddess. It was a, a kind of a, an idea that was set up by some of the founding fathers to represent uh, what they were starting in this country. But she's not like a historical pagan goddess from some European country or indigenous, indigenous region. That 
that part of the, the goddess doesn't exist. If you choose to worship Columbia as a goddess, I'm not, you know, saying that you're wrong for doing that. I personally don't for a few different reasons, which I'll explain to you. Um, first of all, of course, she's not Greek and I'm a, a neo-Hellenist. But secondly, it's because the whole concept of Columbia comes from Christopher Columbus, who, of course, we just went through Columbus Day, which a lot of people would like to see renamed Genocide Day. Um, what people don't realize is that Columbus Day, uh, well, a lot of people don't realize, more, more and more people are realizing this, that Columbus Day is a sham, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a false history that's been fed to us in the public schools um, that basically says that, that Columbus was the one that supposedly discovered this country. He didn't, okay? When he came here, there was already people here. And really, he didn't even come to the United States. He came to an island off the coast of the United States um, and encountered a group of people there and then proceeded to enslave them and to the point where they committed suicide to get out of the enslavement. He had a, a child sex trade going on, and there's many other really kind of gruesome ideas behind the idea of Christopher Columbus. It was not a pretty picture. Um, he was not a good man. Now, keeping in mind that Columbus has a really bad history and many bad events took place um, because of him, I don't really think that C Columbia as a goddess is worthy of worship for that reason. I also do believe that there are goddesses connected with this uh, you know, with this country and uh, with our capital, with our government. Um, for example, uh, the White House, which is built as, uh, you know, modeled after the Parthenon, which of course was the temple of uh, Athena, uh, who was a goddess of wisdom and politics and government and civilization and democracy and all those great things. And so um, I would personally consider this movement to be an affront against my goddess, Athena, for, because that seems to be the idea that they're after is separating these, you know, kind of historical ties with paganism from, um, you know, the, the, the nation's capital. And I'm not asserting that in any way that this is a pagan nation. Um, you know, one could make an argument about that in another video, but I'm not asserting that this is a pagan nation. But we do have a history in this country of recognizing pagan gods within our government. Um, and, and, you know, the, the building, the, uh, the erecting of the White House um, to be, a, a, you know, a, a replica, basically, of the Parthenon, or at least modeled after the Parthenon, is a, is a good example of that. Of course, the other example that comes to everyone's minds is Lady Liberty, otherwise known as the Roman goddess Libertas, that was, you know, erected by uh, the French for us as a welcoming to this country. And I think that those two you know, icons are, are, you know, two among many that exist in this country that, you know, link the, uh, the, the, the history of this country to paganism, but it's not necessarily meaning that that's a pagan, that we're a pagan nation or anything like that. Just that, that the, the founding fathers of this country did recognize, um, and resonate with elements of paganism. Um, and I, and there's nothing wrong with that. It does, however, fly in the face of what a lot of these Christian dominionists are trying to assert, which is that somehow that this is a Christian nation that didn't even recognize any other religions, and that all the founding fathers, all they cared about was erecting a Christian nation, and that there's no doubt in their minds, and shouldn't be in doubt in anybody else's minds, that this is a Christian nation. But of course, when you... Um, when you point out the fact that they had kind of a fascination with um, pagan gods, especially goddesses, and then you know if you if you watch, there's some documentaries out there too, and I'll try to get some links for you um, about how the the uh, founding fathers put up symbols um, of the symbol Virgo and other symbols for virgin to signify Athena, who's of course a, a virgin goddess, and the word Parthenon comes from the Greek word for virgin. Um, so, you know, there's a connection there as well. Um, all these things suggest that what the Christian dominionists argue, that this is a Christian nation, is, is completely false. 
So um, I think that, you know, when you look at what their true motives are for, for doing something like divorcing, um, you know, supposedly divorcing the goddess Columbia from the, you know, District of Columbia, which they, of course, renamed the, the District of Christ, you know, um, if you look at what their true motivation is, it's to hide this, um, this history of our nation. He also um, refers to Columbia as the Queen of Heaven, um, which she's not. There's no historical tie suggesting that she's the Queen of Heaven, and neither are um, the other two prominent goddesses connected with our government, which would be Libertas and Athena. Now, Athena is an Olympian, um, but she doesn't rule Olympus. Um, the the King and Queen of Heaven in the uh, Hellenist path would be Zeus and Hera. So Hera would be the Queen of Heaven for me. Um, and we're not the only person, we're not the only tradition to use that phrase. Um, the Queen of Heaven is also used by Egyptians, and it's also used by Christians to refer to the Virgin Mary. And somebody asked me after we did this, they said, well, how can you do that anyway? Well, we just did it. <laughs> what do you mean, how can you do it? You do it. Well, what authority do you have? I tell you, I have more authority than the U.S. Congress does. See, I guarantee you that that will not forever be called the District of Columbia. It will be changed by somebody. It will be changed by the Lord when he comes back or our Congress. But the body of Christ has to do the changing first. We're the real spiritual authority. Then the natural authority will begin to change. Now this is where we start getting into that scary rhetoric that... Uh... I was mentioning earlier about why these people are so dangerous because they really do think that they are the authority, the real authority of this country, of this nation. I mean, you heard it from the supposed Dr. John Benefield's mouth. Um, he says, well, I have more authority than Congress. You know, um, not, not that his God has authority, but that he has authority. So, I mean, here we get again into more of what their true motive is. I mean, does this really have to do with their religion and their God? Or is it more about um, a power grab for them and their organizations to be able to control the flow of information and to control the, the motivations and the decisions of our government by imposing this um, religious will which then, of course, they can interpret and control. So, I mean, really, like I said, um, we're, we're dealing with theocrats here, but the theocrats are the worst kind, which don't even have true and genuine religious motives behind them, but it's really more about power. Now, before I close up this video, and this is part one of a, I think, hopefully only two-part series, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, White House petition that we've got going on right now. Now, this is a very long uh, link, but there's actually a shorter link, and I will, uh, I'll put that in there for you. The shorter link is wh.gov forward slash four, the number four, and then R-O. So R is in Robert, O is in Oscar. So, um, and you can go to that petition, and it's very easy to sign up. And, um, you know, please sign up. I, I created this petition on September 25th, as you can see right there. And we have until October 25th, 2011, to get 5,000 signatures. And uh, it's very important that we make that goal because recently the White House has changed the petition thresh thre thre threshold. So if we don't make this 5,000 threshold and we have to redo this petition again, we have to then make 25,000 signatures. So um, please, if you haven't signed yet, sign. And if you haven't gotten your parents and your friends and your, your subscribers to sign, please sign. Um, and, you know, by all means, you can make a, a video about it and tell your subs and put it on Facebook, put it on Google+, Plus, wherever you need to do you know, we're, we're getting very close to our goal. We have about two weeks left to get it. And I would really like to see national attention to this issue of uh, basically what the, the Christian conservative group groups are trying to do to paganism. Um, and what this does, if this, if we get the 5,000 signatures, is it um, a lot, it basically sends a message to the White House where they have to actually make a statement um, regarding this. So, um, 
you know, they actually it would bring it to their attention, which they might not even know about it right now. So please, if you haven't signed it yet, please sign it now. And get your friends and your family members and, and anybody that you can talk to about this to sign it as well. Thank you.